who hangs out with a rat? Absolutely! Charles Dickens was a 19th century novelist, a genius. Oh, you were too kind. Why should I believe you? Well, because I know the story of a Christmas carol like the back of my hand. Prove it. All right. Um, there's a little mole on my thumb, and, uh... A scar on my wrist from when I fell off my uh, wife. No, 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 no. Don't tell us your hand. Tell us the story. Oh, oh, thank you. Yes. <clears throat> the Marleys were dead to begin with. Oh, well, pardon me? That's how the story begins, Rizzo. The Marleys were dead to begin with. Oh, as dead as a doornail. It's a good beginning. It's creepy and kind of... Spooky. Oh, thank you, Miss Alton. You're welcome, Mr. Dickens. In life, the Marleys had been business partners with a shrewd moneylender named Ebenezer Scrooge. 
You will meet him as he comes around that corner. When? There. When? Now. There he is, Mr. Ebenezer Scrooge. Say, is it getting cold around here? When the cold wind rolls, it chills you, chills you to the bone. But there's nothing in nature that freezes your heart like it is to be alone. It paints you with indifference like a lady paints with rouge. And the first of the worst, the most hated and cursed, is the one that we call Scrooge. Oh, God. The wrath of many, this is Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh, there goes Mr. Lumpa. There goes Mr. Brown. If they gave a prize for being me, the winner would be him. Old Scrooge, he lost his money because he thinks it gives him power. If he became a flavor, you can bet he would be sour. Even the vegetables don't like him. Making me a part of this. He was a 
tight-fisted hand at the grindstone, Scrooge. A squeezing, wrenching, grasping, clutching, covetous old sinner. Oh, Cratchit. Yes, Mr. Scrooge? Who is this? It's Mr. Applegate, sir. He's here to speak to you about his... Morgan. Please, Mr. Scrooge, I know you're very angry about this, and I didn't mean to fall behind in the payments. Lord knows it being Christmas and all. Oh, please don't shout at me, sir. That, and of course, little Gwen, her lungs aren't right. The doctor takes his share, don't he? I mean, you can yell and scream, and you're right, but it won't do no good. <clears throat> Because I'm the stone you can't squeeze blood from, and that's the truth! Thank you for not shouting at me. Let us deal with the eviction notices for tomorrow, Mr. Cratchit. Tomorrow's Christmas, sir. Very well. You may gift wrap them. Oh, neither. There's certainly a lot today. Okay. Christmas is a very busy time for us, Mr. Cratchit. People preparing feasts, giving parties, spending the mortgage money on frivolities. One might say that December is the foreclosure season. Harvest time for the moneylenders. If you please, Mr. Scrooge, it's gotten colder. Yeah. And the bookkeeping staff would like to have an extra shovel full of coal for the fire. We can't do the bookkeeping. Yeah, all of our pens have turned to inksicles. Yeah, our assets are frozen. How would the bookkeepers like to be suddenly... <laughs> at that moment, who should arrive at the door but Scrooge's nephew Fred, his only living relative? Nephew Fred, I don't see him. Trust me. Oh. Hello, I'm gone. So, you're very good at that, Mr. Dickens. A Merry Christmas, Uncle Scrooge. God save you. Merry Christmas. Uh, humbug. Quick, it'll be warmer in there. Christmas at home, bug uncle. Oh, you don't mean that, surely. Actually, I think it's colder in here. Mm. Merry Christmas, you say. What right of you to be merry? You're poor enough. What right of you to be dismal? You're rich enough. He's got a natty, old boy, speechless. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be cooked with his own turkey and buried with a stake of holly in his heart. Well, not quite speechless. Oh, uncle. Nephew, you keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. Christmas is a loving, honest, and charitable time. And though it's never put a scrap of gold or silver in my pocket, I believe that Christmas has done me good and will do me good. And I say, God bless it. Yeah. Yeah. How one celebrate Christmas on the island? 
Now, in these times, it was customary on Christmas Eve for well-meaning gentlemen to fall upon businesses collecting donations for the poor and homeless. Mr. Scrooge, I presume? Oh, yeah. We're from the Order of Victoria Charity Foundation. We'd like to speak to you about a donation. <laughs> ah, welcome. This jolly old gentleman here is Mr. Scrooge. He's very generous to charities. My dear nephew, at this festive season of the year, Mr. Scrooge, many of us feel that we must take care of our poor and homeless. <laughs> Presents and poor houses. Oh, plenty of those, sir. Oh, excellent. For a moment I was worried. Some of us are endeavoring to raise a fund for the poor and the homeless. What might I put you down for? Nothing. You wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone. I do not make merry myself at Christmas. That certainly is true. I cannot afford to make idle people merry. That is certainly not true. Don't you have other things to do this afternoon, my dear nephew? Sadly, I do, Uncle. So I shall make my donations. And uh, leave you to make yours. Thank you so very much. Uncle. Come and have Christmas dinner with me and Clara tomorrow. Why ever did you give marriage? Why? Because I fell in love. <laughs> That's the only thing in the world sillier than a Merry Christmas. It's no use, Uncle. I shall keep my Christmas humor to the last. A Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year. Merry Christmas, Fred. Merry Christmas, Bob. I'm back. Now then, sir, about the uh, donation. Well, now, let's see. I know how to treat the poor. My taxes go to pay for the prisons and the poor houses. The homeless must go there. But some would rather die. If they'd rather die, then they'd better do it. And decrease the surplus population. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, dear. And this is the door. You may use it. Uh, all right, Beaker, come along. I think we've taken enough of Mr. Scrooge's time. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Thank you. 
tomorrow's Christmas. And he tells you then, uh, you know, if you please, sir, half an hour off hardly seems customary for Christmas Day. How much time off is customary, Mr. Cratchit? Uh, why, uh, the whole day. Yeah, 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 the whole day. The entire day. No, no, that's the wrong idea. If you please, Mr. Scrooge, why open the office tomorrow? Other businesses will be closed. You'll have no one to do business with. Yeah. Uh, it'll waste a lot of expensive coal for the fire. Yeah. It's a poor excuse for picking a man's pocket every December the 25th. But as I seem to be the only person around who knows that. Thank you, Mr. Scrooge. Be here all the earlier the next morning. <laughs> With their employer gone at last, Bob Cratchit and the bookkeepers immediately began that most pleasant of activities, the celebration of Christmas. He's gone! Gentlemen, <laughs> let's close up for Christmas. Hmm. There's magic in the air this evening, magic in the the world is at her best, you know, when people love and care. The promise of excitement is one the night will keep. After all, there's only one people Christmas. has got a home. There's no such thing as strangers when the strangers say hello. And everyone is family. We're having so much fun. After all, there's only one your sleep till Christmas.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Searched his rooms. 
Okay, that does it. Pardon? How do you know what Scrooge is doing? We're down here and he's up there. I keep telling you, storytellers are omniscient. I know everything. Hoity toity, Mr. Godlike Smarty Pants. To conduct a proper search, Scrooge was forced to light the lamps. How does he do that? Digested beef, a blob of muscle, <laughs> a crumb of cheese. Yes, there's more of gravy than of grave about you. <laughs> more of gravy than of grave? What a terrible pun! Where do you get those jokes? These comedy affairs, Ebenezer! <laughs> Please, tell me, Robert, don't criticize me. 
There's only two things in this life I hate. Heights and jumping from them. Too late now. Come on, I'll catch ya. God save my little broken body. Missed. Oh, wait a second. I forgot my jelly beans. Um... What? You can fit through those bars? Yeah. You are such an idiot. What? What? Hey, what? 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 into the empty silence of a dreamless sleep. Uh, you know, that guy can break his tail falling out of this tree. You want to see what's going on, don't you? Yes. Look, there's Scrooge's window. It's 
Stand up. Build your life as a smallest Oh, yes. Work hard, work long, and be constructive. Oh, Ebenezer, life is a golden opportunity. Today you go forth into the real world. You must keep your nose to the grindstone. Work hard, lad. And one day, you'll be as solid as this very building. Oh! Hmm. I've been in to fix that shelf. Yes, sir, Master. Well, young man, you have been apprenticed to a fine company in London. Today, you will become a man of business. I'm looking forward to my headmaster. Mm, you will love business. It is the American way. Well, it is the British way. Yes, headmaster. Mm. Oh, here is your coat. Come, Scrooge. There is much to see. Remember, don't dip the driver. A moment later, Scrooge found himself standing on a city street looking at a building he had not seen in years. Tell me, Ebony Scrooge, do you know this place? Know it? My first job was here. This is Fuzzywig's old rubber chicken factory. Once again, it was Christmas Eve. Night was falling, and the lamplighters were plying their trade. Hey, 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 Fuzzywick himself. Look, my lads, desk is falling. The lamp lighters are at work. It's Christmas Eve for certain. What an employee he was. As hard and as ruthless as a rose petal. <laughs> it's time for the party to begin! It's the Fuzzywick Christmas party. Rizzo, come on! So just grab hold of the stick. Merry Christmas! Thank you, Miss Thank you. Excuse me, everyone. Can we have some quiet, please? No. 
the flowers in your place. And it can't be helped now. How could we marry now? There's not even enough for a decent home. The investments haven't grown as they should. So you said last year. The business continues to be poor. You're a partner in your own firm now. Barely clearing expenses. You said the partnership was the goal. This is for you. I love you, Bill. and torturing me. I told you, these were the shadows of the things that have been, that they are what they are. Do not blame me. Leave me. second of the ghosts was due to appear. Yet now, as the clock finished striking, Absent-minded spirit. No, I'm a large absent-minded spirit. <laughs> My mind is filled with the here and now, and the now is Christmas. <laughs> I don't believe I've ever met anybody like you before, sir. Really? Eighteen hundred of my brothers have come before me. Eighteen hundred. Imagine the grocery bills. <laughs> have you ever noticed that everything seems wonderful at Christmas? Uh, in all honesty, spirit. 
Perhaps I, I've never understood about Christmas. Before this day is done, you will understand. No, 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 no! Ah, we shall go out into the world. <laughs> Suppose you enjoy that. Of course. <laughs> The street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. It's true, wherever you find love, it feels like Christmas. A cup of kindness to share with the mother. A sweet reunion with a friend or a brother. In all the places you find love, it feels like Christmas. It is the season of love, a special time of caring, the ways of love and prayer. Pudding and sung the carols. What well, now, my lovelies? Again, Fred. 
Well, we must have a game at Christmas. Do faithful play games at Christmas? I love games. <laughs> so, do you know that fur is wax? Oh, yeah. I wondered about the texture. <laughs> Let's play yes and no. Oh, wonderful game! Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a great game! And I'll be it. Yes, that Fred Beard, he always thinks of good things. I do have a good one, Clara. Yes. Is it vegetable? No. Mineral? No. Animal, then? What else? What else, indeed? Uh, is it found on a farm? Never. In the city? Usually. Oh. Does it pull a handsome girl? <laughs> Certainly not. How about a dog? No. A cat. I said it first. No. Uh. Wait then, is this an unwanted creature? Often. A mouse. No. A rat. You called? A cockroach. No. Oh, witch! Oh dear, it's too wonderful. Wait, wait, I know. An unwanted creature, but not a rattleach or a cockroach. Then what? Then what? What? It's Ebenezer Scrooge! Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> See no more. Here. Why have we come to this old corner of the town? It's Christmas here too, you know. Uh, that's Bob Cratchit's house. Perhaps it was the spirit's own generous nature and his sympathy for all poor men that led them straight to the home of Scrooge's faithful clerk. Goose! They're cooking goose down there! No. Get out of the way! Hey, 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 don't be sweeping the chimney now! You're blocking the smell! This is Bob Cratchit's house. How do you know that? You just told me. Hmm. Well, I'm usually trustworthy. <laughs> Who's that? Mrs. Cratchit, of course. <laughs> Bye. 
the people saw him in church because it might be pleasant for them to remember upon Christmas Day what made blind beggars walk and blind men see. A remarkable child. And with that, the Cratchits came to what was surely the happiest single moment in all the live long year. Such a meager feast. But very much appreciated. I paid up such a small amount. Mr. Scrooge. Bob. Bob Cratchit. It only seems right that I should lift a glass to my employer. I'll give you Mr. Scrooge, the founder of the feast. The founder of the feast, indeed. <laughs> If I had him here, I would give him a piece of my mind to feast upon, and I bet he would choke on it. Hmm. Choke. choke! My dear, the, the children, Christmas Day. Uh, uh, oh, I, I suppose that on the blessed day of Christmas, one must drink to the health of uh, Mr. Scrooge, mm. even though he is odious, <laughs> stingy, <laughs> Wicked and unfeeling and badly dressed. To the founder of the feast, Mr. Scrooge. To Mr. Scrooge, you be very merry and happy this day, I have no doubt. No doubt. Cheers. God bless us, everyone. This full of sweet surprises. Every day is a gift. The sun comes up and I can feel it lift. My spirit fills me up with laughter. Fills me up with song. I look into the eyes of love and know that I belong. Bless us all, be gathered here, the living thing in me, I hold dear, no place on earth, 
compares with home, and every path will bring me back from where I roam. This is love, as we live, we always comfort and You have changed me. 
And now I leave you with the ghost of Christmas yet to come. You mean the future? Master, go forth and know him better, man. Go! These collar buttons 
and his dresser. Mother of Paul. how green the place is. I, I picked a spot for Tim where he can see. It's, it's a spot on the hill. And you can see the ducks on the river. Tiny Tim, Tiny Tim always looked watching the ducks on the river. Must there be a Christmas that brings this awful scene? How can we endure it? It's all right, children. Life is made up of meetings and partings. That is the way of it. I am sure we shall never forget Tiny Tim or this first parting that there was among us. Thank you. 
must we return to this place? There is something else that I must know. Is that not true? Spirit, I know what I must ask. I feel too, but I must. Who was the wretched man whose death brought so much glee and happiness to others? Are these the shadows of things that will be, or are they the shadows of things that may be only? These events can be changed. Keep it all the year. <laughs> I will live my life in the past, the present, and the future. I will not shut out the lessons the spirits have taught me. Tell me that I may spend out the writing on this stuff. <laughs> is on. The rules is on. Hi guys, we're back. We promised we would be. But the thing that made Scrooge happiest of all was that his life lay before him. And it could be changed. I will live my life in the past, the present, and the future. Object of a run of mine. Heaven in the Christmas time be praised for this day. I say it on my knees, Jacob and Robert, on my knees. Oh, you're not turned down. They're here. And I'm here. More's a miracle. Oh. Oh. I don't know what to do. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm, I'm as mad as a schoolboy. Um, do you think it's safe for us to be up here? Scrooge is safe. What can happen now? Yeah. <laughs> you there, boy. What? Me? Uh, that is, 
Uh, what? Me, sir? What's today? Party? What's today, my fine fellow? Today? Well, today is Christmas Day. It's Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits did it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Uh, of course they can. <laughs> do you know the poultry shop in the next street? Yes, sir, I do. An intelligent lad. A remarkable lad. <laughs> do you know whether the prize turkey has been sold in the window? Oh, the one twice as big as me? It's still there. Oh, it's a pleasure talking with you, lad. Go and buy it. Be serious. I am being serious. Buy it for me and I'll give you a shilling. No, I'll give you five shillings. <laughs> The boy was off like a shot. So even... Ah! Um, sorry. I'll bring it to Bob Cratchit's house. What a surprise it'll be. It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. And a few moments later, dressed in his finest, Scrooge appeared on the streets of the city to wish Merry Christmas to all the world. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, gee, thanks. Everyone was out and about this fine morning. And soon he encountered two familiar faces. <gasps> Mr. Scrooge? Pardon me, gentlemen, but about the charity donation you asked me for yesterday. Put me down for... <gasps> that much? Not a penny less. A great many back payments are included in it, I assure you. Oh my goodness, I don't know what to say. I just wish there was something we could give you. A gift? A gift for me? Thank you. Fifty times, and a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> with a thankful heart, with an endless joy, with a growing family, every girl and boy will be named to me. To me. To me. To me. Peace to me. Yes, and every night will land, and every day will start with a grateful prayer and a thankful heart. With an open smile and with open doors, I will bid you welcome. What is mine is yours. With a glass raised to toast your health. With a glass raised to toast your health. And a promise to share the wealth. Promise to share the wealth. A sail of friendly course. Fire of friendly charm. And a sea Life is like a journey. Who knows when it ends? Yes, and if you need to know the measure of a man, you simply count his friends. Look around you. <laughs> the glory that you see. Is 
Discussed. Oh, but, but, Mr. Scrooge, sir, we did discuss it. It's Christmas Day. You gave me the day off. I, I, Ebenezer Scrooge, <laughs> would I do a thing like that? No, uh, I mean, yes, but, but you did. Oh, Cratchit, I've had my fill of this. <laughs> I've had my fill of you, Mr. Emily, Scrooge. Emily, Mr. And Scrooge. therefore, Bob Cratchit. And therefore, you came to this house at once. And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. Oh, and I am about to raise you right off the pavement. <laughs> yes, Bob. Raise your salary. Pay your mortgage on this house. Oh, please, sir. Yes, Would you and your family care to join us for a little turkey dinner on this fine Christmas day? Merry Christmas. And so, 
as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us. God bless us, everyone. The love we found. The love we found. We carry with us. Yeah. <laughs>